Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. Here we are live in Boston. We're winding down day two of two full days of coverage. Special presentation of theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante of wikibon.com. This is our wrap up of the show, day two. Dave, um, you know, great, great two days, and I think, you know, I would categorize the two days of CUBE as an ingestion of data that we were sharing with folks um, to put the big data metaphor together, but really about customers. A HP's new mojo is to let the customers do the talking. And I think that's actually perfect for theCUBE. It might not have all the sizzle with the big names like Nate Silver who uh, didn't come on, he, although he was on, um, on the Cube previous, Stonebreakers on a couple weeks ago, but again, HP's got so many customers, they're telling the story for them. And HP Vertica, as it turns out, might be one of the most successful, productive acquisitions uh, in HP history in terms of value for the price that they paid. <laughs> I mean, certainly compared to autonomy, I mean, 11 billion versus 300 million change. Vertica's crown jewel, certainly the intangible there, which they saw uh, was they had great DevOps people, real engineers, because of the scale factor. And you got you to give a hat tip to the Columnar store, some of the work that they did early days of Vertica. That horse came home. Well. I agree with you, first of all, about the conference. The best conferences are those where they're, the content is relevant. Clearly it's relevant here. We're talking about data and analytics. Number two, where the content is predominantly presented by practitioners. Because that those are the guys who really understand. And here, you're talking about a lot of developers inside of companies like Etsy and Wayfair and Tapjoy and many others that are running you know, Vertica. A lot of retail stuff, uh, you know, a lot of e-commerce sites, and so that, makes for a good conference, it's intimate, it's you know, 1,000, 1,500 people, so it's not a zoo. You know, it's tabletops, it's not you know, giant booths and all that kind of you know, fanfare. But I would say that, you know, my hope, John, is that they can keep this conference intimate and really practitioner oriented. I think I want to talk to you a little bit about just Vertica, Haven, HP's big data strategy in general. I agree with you. Vertica, big winner, great ROI. I think the problem that HP had with Vertica is that the time to value on that ROI was delayed because Valeo Apotheker had no clue you know, what was going on and didn't realize what he had acquired. It was just a small little thing that he didn't care about and he was so distracted with other things. And then when Meg came in, she just had such a mess to clean up, she couldn't give it the attention. And then I think finally, they did the right thing, they put Colin Mahoney in charge and then Meg said, wow, this is the future of the company. And they really drove sort of Vertica as a linchpin, I think, of the software strategy. Here's the challenge, Haven, okay? So Haven's good, good marketing, Hadoop, autonomy, Vertica, enterprise security, and N applications. Kind of a fuzzy concept when it came out. You don't buy Haven, right? What you do is you buy sort of pieces of Haven. You buy Vertica, you buy autonomy, you buy security, and applications, really it's not an application development platform, it hasn't been, it's just becoming one. Um, so the pro what's the problem with that? It's good, like I say, it's good marketing, it's good slideware, but when you're selling, like let's put yourself in the sales motion. Okay, let's talk about Hadoop. What does that do? Hadoop. If I'm selling Vertica, I don't really want to talk about Hadoop unless the customer brings it up and says, hey, let's talk about how you fit into my Hadoop strategy. I don't really want to lead with Hadoop, right? I don't want to lead with a bunch of open source free software. Autonomy, well what's the fit between autonomy and Vertica? And I think you can see by talking to the practitioners here, that the ones that are doing autonomy, the idle, oh yeah, we're doing idle. You doing Vertica? Yeah, no, nah, we're looking at it. You doing Vertica? Yeah, you doing idle? Oh no. So the, the synergies are good on paper, but they're not really there in terms of the solution. So that has to evolve. I think excavating. Well, they've been working on that. They've been working on it, but it takes a long time. It's integration, you know how hard that is. I think Excavator is designed to, to do some of that, but of course, HP has to keep up with all the changes that are going on in the marketplace, like streaming, like you know Kafka, um, and then, oh, by the way, it has to accommodate Storm, it has to accommodate, you know, we're at the Cloudera direction, the Hortonworks direction, which is a little bit of a fork there. Oh, no fork, no, it's a little bit of a, 
you know, change it. So they have to accommodate all that stuff while at the same time taking the crown jewels of HP and positioning them. So I think that's a challenge uh, for, for HP. And, and you know, the marketing's nice, the Haven, it's a great little you know, acronym, you know, but it's, to me it's not really a, a market changing solution. Vertica is, you know, Haven got a ways to go. I think, Dave, one of the things that's also happening is this composite application uh, concept that's not new. Certainly composite apps have been around, you know, web services, you know, all this stuff's good. But what's happening now at a platform level is you're seeing companies reuse, and it's really the, really the open source ethos that's been driving this. And to have Vertica being used by startups with tier one VCs funding them, uh, that's impressive to me, that's notable. And I think that to me is a signal to where this market's going, and it's a time to value, race to value, startups that can actually cross over and go from hack up, hackathon prototype, which looks good on paper. I've always said, you know, hack, hacking hackathons are the new PowerPoint. Show the value, but when you get to some critical mass, the system breaks. That's what we call a hack. Okay, great, hacks are great. Hacks show value, you double down on the value, that's agile. This is the new way to do software development. We've been saying it for years on theCUBE. What's happening now is this, they're turning to Vertica because the companies that get successful, that are data full, that get a lot of data, they just turn on the Vertica engine and now Vertica's putting some more tooling around it. So super smart move by HP. Wanna waste time building that. It's not critical, it's 10 different versions. Let the customers choose. Kafka's getting some steam. Again, these are the, this is the new HP. The other thing I want to talk about is disruption. So we heard a couple of times from the HP folks mainly, but also from the practitioners that Vertica was a disruptor. And I, while I agree with that, it's certainly a disruptor of the traditional enterprise data warehouse, <laughs> AKA you know, Oracle is really the gold standard there. Certainly a disruptor there. That whole space, that MPP space with the TISA, uh, 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 ParXL, um, uh, obviously Vertica, et cetera. They had a little run, you know, like the run on guards. I always use that example in the NFL draft, but it wasn't game changing. It didn't, it, it was somewhat game changing. It didn't put Oracle out of business. It didn't, didn't unseat Oracle. So yes, it was disruptive, but to me, John, the real disruptor is Redshift. That is the major disruptor in the marketplace because what Amazon did is they took the, they essentially took the IP from ParXL, which now is owned by Acti, and Acti gets nothing out of this deal, by the way. And so, and they took that and they built their own database, a highly scalable, massively parallel database that they're now selling as a service. Redshift is kicking ass, we know that. It's very disruptive to models including Vertica, certainly Oracle, but also including Vertica because it's in the cloud. So it's, that's why you hear from a lot of the Vertica clients I think, that, I think that it's, it's, I think they're it's running the stuff on premise, right? Well, it's the other the way Vertica, around. Vertica guys are running Red stuff Redshift's disrupting the market. Now, yes, it's disrupting. So now you can run Vertica on Amazon, great, it's in the marketplace, but, but Amazon's pushing Redshift hard, and especially in small businesses, I see th that solution from Amazon very difficult to compete with. Go ahead, sorry. Well, that's Redshift's disrupting everyone in this ecosystem, saying, hey, if you want to quack like a BI tool, go, go ahead all day long. We're going to apply our disruptive rules, AKA AWS, to Redshift and put in the integrated stack. And we'll look at what it's done. It's forcing everybody to move faster, again, to the value. If you don't show the value, you are not going to get traction. So again, this is where they're separate the hype from the reality. The customers vote with their wallet. Well, and I think you know, to the point we were making all week that what the what the cloud guys, or public cloud guys are doing generally, and specifically Amazon, they're building a sort of an end-to-end -end data management you know, s solution framework, including a PaaS layer, including a database layer, you know, including the infrastructure services, you know, including streaming with, with Kinesis, all the components that you would you know, envision, and they're offering it as a service available through an API. Now, it's simple, it's maybe not as functional, um, but it's certainly easy. Now, is it cheaper? Mm, depends. We had one practitioner on today said it's $11,000 a month to go to uh, AWS, Azure, and Google versus $2,000 a month with, with his own on-premises. So the economics is still a question mark, but again, for small businesses, I think it's a no-brainer. And I think 
you know, the cloud guys will continually get more functional. So that's the challenge that HP, you know, really faces. The, now the flip side of that is, Vertica's really doing well, it's growing, it's got traction. Well, Vertica's the crown jewel. It's the crown jewel, and frankly, you know, if I'm HP, I would, I'd be leading with Vertica. Well, look at this event. This event speaks volumes to what Vertica's done. I mean, Vertica was initially the market, but you know, the, the market pivots, and, and you got to go where you go where the wind is. And you know, Vertica might not have been the end game for Vertica, but they put on three consecutive years of a great event, Dave. And this is the DevOps again. What they had tapped into here, whether by accident or on purpose, doesn't matter, is that they bumped into lightning in a bottle. They hit the developer market where the engineering's getting done. And we said that on theCUBE. DevOps is engineering, okay? It's developing as well. Developers on ops, they engineer and they write code. So again, a unique breed, an elite breed, but also big data is powered by the infrastructure. Again, I've always said that, and that's coming to be true. And it's all playing out, just the way I called it. And, and the thing is, there's so much more to do, right? Looker. You know, Logi and these companies, you got you know, startups coming out of the woodwork. This is going to be the beginning of a massive innovation cycle. And again, this, this might soften the blow, the, the real pub bubble that might pop. So, you know, in Silicon Valley, a lot of stuff going on, as you always know, and bubbles are out there, and this bubble might not be as a big of a pop because of all the action going on in the enterprise. So, let's talk about ecosystem, MHP, you know, partner friendly, choice, open. I saw much more emphasis on open source. HP distributed our, a couple of other open source projects. Much, much greater affinity within open source over the last four or five years for HP, so I give them high marks for that. Uh, the ecosystem you know, continues to grow. Some come, some go. Tableau not here, kind of interesting. I think that's an interesting signal in the marketplace. I don't know if that's, you know, there's tension there. Uh, I don't know if that Tableau is going to be thinking about competing more with, with HP or vice versa, but certainly Click was here. Um, you know, other visualization companies in the in the ecosystem. So, so that's you know interesting to watch. There's a nice little ecosystem growing up around uh, around around Vertica. Again, to me, this conference is really all about Vertica and the innovations of Vertica. And you get some great guests on on the cube and and, and great action around the practitioner side. But so, let me come back to you, John. This is our third year here. Yeah. What what's your analysis? Of here, or just tech in general, Silicon Valley, Boston? Well, I always love the Silicon Valley angle. I mean, I kind of can anticipate what Well, you're Boston's say. a lot slower than Silicon Valley, so here's what's going on. Boston, you know, to me, is still in the minor leagues when it comes to, comes to tech. Uh, and that's clear and across the board. Venture capital, um, innovation. I think it's in a different league. I don't even think it's in the same league. No, it's definitely <laughs> it triple A ball at best. Um, so, Silicon Valley, there's just so much more action here. Boston, though, has got an engineering culture. I mean, you, the, the, it's just a different culture, right? Boston's got great engineers here, and the concern I have out here is there's so much churn and burn, you got so much talent laying around. I've always said, this is a ripe environment with all the universities for the data science. I mean, I said that in 2010, Dave, when we first were down at MIT doing the MIT stuff. Boston could crush the data business. If the funding market, cap venture capitalists, uh, besides the Chris Lynch's, who's pretty aggressive, really funded data science, Boston could be a mecca for cloud and data science. And I think they're missing a huge opportunity. Um, you know, Silicon Valley is a bubble machine right now. A lot of things are high. You have Uber, uh, $51 billion. Um, a lot of stuff. Google changing their name from Google to Alphabet. It's trying to go conglomerate, trying to be this spin out machine. Um, like self-driving cars, but there is a bubble that will pop in Silicon Valley. And the question is, will you be sitting in a chair when the music stops? That's my analysis. I've seen this multiple times in the Valley over the past 16 years, and it's coming. Now again, the caveat is, the enterprise business is going to soften the blow. Because the enterprise, cloud, mobile, big data, there's actual significant underlying technology change happening at the architectural level. That is a wealth creating dynamic. So that is going to be interesting to see if that thing can be you know, overlaid into the bubble popping. The bubble being this consumer company. You're already seeing people running for the hills on the media business, um, consolidation. You're starting to see a lot of these you know, analytics companies consolidating, even in the BI space here, some consolidation. So there's rapid consolidation happening in Silicon Valley, and yet an expansion on the enterprise and real tech, life sciences and technology. So that's my take here. Now I think this show represents 
that trend, Vertica has attracted those kinds of developers, guys who built Facebook, those kinds of guys, guys who are working on large scale infrastructure to power large scale data analytics. And I think that's where the action is going to be, and I think the software piece is critical on that. So, you know, again, Google's changing the name to Alphabet, interesting trend. More stuff's happening, so a ton of stuff on Internet of Things. We're still going to see the hype on a lot of things, so again, that's my take. You know, overall show here, you know, HP's got a lot of work to do. HP software is not known to be great in a lot of the companies. They're known as an enterprise company for data, uh, data centers, but overall, their revenue portion, they know they got to win in software. Well, they, and, and I think they can't do it like they did before. They have to win in software. Well, they got to go. They got to go all in. And Vertica has the, to me, the winning formula, right? I mean, it's all about yeah. adding value. What percentage of revenue practice? is software? It's not a big chunk. It's tiny. I mean, it was when they were the huge conglomerate before the split. It's going to be what six, less than ten percent. So now when they split, maybe it'd be twelve percent. Two. I mean, okay. I might even so be those. aggressive and put cloud and software in one business unit. Well, hmm. well, I think that and that's interesting dynamic. Yeah, I think it know. is, but I think those growth businesses should be maybe more tightly aligned. I mean, I think that makes sense. But I think that HP has, the, or HP Vertica, has the formula, right? So I'm hoping that HP has learned from that and preserves that, brings some of that into the Discover Mojo. We saw some of that, you know, prior to the split. It was going to be interesting to see, you know, HP Discover in London. Um, there's going to be a lot of talk about the new HP. It's going to be presumably HP Enterprise. I mean, we were at the last HP as we knew HP. So, but. But overall, very high marks for this event. The keynotes were great. Uh, the speakers were great. Stonebreaker uh, was fantastic. Uh, Ken Rudin from Facebook, really, really good. Poppy Crumb, just phenomenal presentations. Uh, Nate Silver, Nate Silver's very good. He gave the same presentation that he always gives, but he's still really, really good. The best part of his presentation, I thought, was Q&A. He took some, some questions, and the audience had some really, it was interesting to hear the audience. They were really asking, like, can you help me with my problem? I mean, essentially asking him, well, well, how do you, you know, start the analysis? And how, what what variables should we be considering? Some really hardcore sort of data science questions to a uh, you know a, a great you know statistician. So that was the best part of his talk, I thought. And I thought Colin, you know, did a great job. You know, came across as, you know, very CEO oriented. I thought Young John's was very good too. Young John's, I thought, you know, did a good job. I I, I was. I was thankful or hope uh, or glad that he didn't just fly in. I mean, he was in and out, but he did a good job when he was here. You know, he shook a few hands. He gave a good talk. I thought he well, was. Well, I think solid. they have to align with their audience, right? I mean, the audience doesn't want to hear sales pitches. They don't want to hear scripted bullshit. And they want to hear, okay, we love you. We're here to answer any questions. How can we help you be more successful? As engineers, that's like, I want access to experts. Pick up the phone when I call, or I'm in front of my tweet, or whatever the, their vehicle is, and that's ultimately what they got here. Great developer environment here, the lounge. So overall, great event. I think the class event. The last thing I wanted to add, John, is my advice from Meg. And uh, in case oh, you're we're watching, at that segment now. In case you're watching, Meg. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just I'm, I'm going to narrow it. This will be a longer conversation. Um, but as it relates to Vertica in particular, she'll give bits and pieces, Meg and Kathy, on the calls. Uh, of course, Kathy's going over to HP Inc. But they'll give bits and pieces on the earnings calls of guidance. Every now and then, talk about Vertica, how much it's growing. I would like to see, maybe to your point, put the growth businesses together and give us a consistent view of those growth businesses so we can have, as outside observers, an understanding of how what the trajectory is of those growth businesses. I just don't understand the, the rationale. I mean, if I was on Meg's staff, like, Meg, okay, let's get to some reality here. You put. Amazon model on the table. Let's put cloud under software, hide the ball until that thing's ramping up where we got to disclose it. We got to invest in the cloud. The cloud has to be a winner. HP software has good mojo data. They got Vertica, they got they got a market that wants analytics, they want software. So this is the time to make the move in my opinion. I think the cloud can be the Achilles heel for HP. You got a good team over there, a little bit kind of, you know, going in misdirections here, something, or confused. You take away the confusion, just focus on growing that asset. And that's what I would do, take that whole cost out of it. Now that's my take. I think that's good, good suggestion, oh, John. Yeah. I think uh, we should- Meg, if you're watching, sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, again, overall, very high. I've always loved this conference, not just because it's in Boston, not just because it's right across the street from Legal Seafood, <laughs> but, yeah. but because of the quality of the content. What do you think, think of Legal's food this year? 
always very, very good, consistently outstanding. I think they got a, a fried clam issue, personally. I think they need you know. to work on their fried clams. Other than that, legals as usual. It was, always. I mean, other, other than that, I'd say it was perfect. So my Apple Watch is calling me and telling me that uh, it's lobster time upstairs yeah. celebration. <laughs> so um, great time, great job, guys. Great to be live in Boston. Great to be here. Uh, if you're watching, uh, follow the cube. We got a lot more events coming up. We got OpenStack. We're going to be in Seattle. We're going to be in Silicon Valley, and of course, VMworld's coming up. It's the big show for us. So again, big cloud show. A lot of stuff going on with VMworld. And again, on the ground cube conversations. And again, go to wikibon.com for all the research. SiliconAngle.com, reference point for innovation. All your daily news there. So, live from Boston. This is signing off. This is the cube. Thanks for watching.